following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. In this episode of Life's Little Miracles, Krista's kidney tumor, Harry's daycare accident, Sasha's nose ring mishap, and Dustin's epilepsy surgery. I think what it's all going to boil down to is the mapping of that region and then determination of how much of that abnormal tissue we can remove safely for him. Eight-year-old Dustin has severe epilepsy that can result in dozens of seizures a day. Medication is not controlling the epilepsy, and Dustin's last hope for a normal life is to have the area of his brain responsible for the seizures removed. We first noticed Dustin was having seizures when he was in kindergarten. Um, and at first we thought he was having panic attacks because we'd never actually see the seizure. We would see the reaction after the seizure. And it took us um, probably a couple months to realize, to actually see uh, his first seizure. Can you read that? I'm sorry to hear that you're not well. I hope you will get better soon. I look forward to seeing you soon from Yuri. Tired? Today, Dustin will have a preliminary operation that will help doctors collect information on where the seizures are coming from and whether removing the area will devastate his ability to move and speak. I need to see your chest there, young man, okay? Show your muscles, buddy. <laughs> Find us, Steph. Let go, please. I guess we better get going here, otherwise we're going to be late for our date with Dr. Ruck. Fourteen-year-old Krista has a suspicious growth in her right kidney. The growth is probably the result of tubular sclerosis, a condition that includes symptoms from spotted skin to multiple internal tumors. I have spots on my face that I've had ever since I was like five years old. So I wanted to know what they were because my family doctor just said that they'd go away after time, but they never did. So I went to a dermatologist and they, they said that it was tubular sclerosis. It's a genetics disorder. And uh, you know, in the beginning, it didn't seem like anything big to us because you know, Krista's healthy, she's bright, she's, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with her that you can see. Uh, the last test we went to, of course, was kidney test, and uh, that showed a big growth in her kidney of, I believe it's four and a half centimeters. And now we're, you know, getting quite concerned at this point. Until a sample of the growth can be examined by pathology, Doctors cannot know what kind of threat it is to Krista's health. In a hurry? Well, Today she will undergo surgery that could result in the removal of her entire right kidney. Very good. So you're all set. The plan is to make a small opening first, take a look at the kidney, take a look at where the uh, mass is, make a biopsy of that, take a little sample from it, and then we'll send that off to the pathologist and we'll see what it shows. Will I still be? You'll be asleep. Yeah. And then if it is something that they need to remove, would you um, just come yeah. back down and operate on yeah. It takes 20 minutes. It takes about 20 minutes for us to get an answer. We'd like it to come back something that we would say, well, we don't need to remove the whole kidney, simply because you've got 
other lesions in the other kidney. And we don't know what the long term, how, how they will behave, those other lesions. If it turns out to be a benign tumor, nothing that can endanger your life or spread or grow, keep on growing, then we would remove as much of it as possible as we safely can, leaving the rest of the kidney behind. Then I'll see you inside. Dustin's surgeon is also ready for last minute questions. His parents take him to the OR waiting room. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you guys again. Hi. Good to Hi. see you. Hey, Dustin. So, it looks like in preparation for the surgery, he's got a haircut. It's going to help us out. <laughs> and we do plan to do the exposure today. It's on the right side of the, uh, the brain, as you know. Okay. Following the exposure, we'll place the large grid on the surface. And that grid will be used to help us map out the seizure activity over the next several days. He's got some very abnormal looking tissue in this central zone of the brain which is causing his seizures. And I think what it's all going to boil down to is the um, mapping of that region and then determination of how much of that abnormal tissue we can remove safely for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but that'll be still a few days away. Dustin's surgery is minutes away. The OR team is ready for Krista. Yo, come on, you gotta give your mom Five. Zoom three years. Yeah, that's correct. It won't seem like that long. She's not nervous. You're more nervous than she is. I know. But underneath she is. She hasn't said a word, so. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's have the marking pen, please. We're going to approach this from below the ribs. Okay. Surgeons begin with a small incision to access Krista's kidney for the biopsy sample. Okay, go ahead, go to the front. The tumor is below in the lower half of the kidney. We will need pathology, probably tell them in, a, in about 15 minutes. Jeez. And there's our mass. So there's our tumor here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and take the biopsy knife, please. This doesn't look right. Looks quite fleshy, man. This is, this doesn't look right. We're gonna go upstairs and see what the report shows, and then um, come back and decide what next to do. Preliminary testing will determine if Krista's tumor is cancer. Younger children can find the trip to the operating room overwhelming. Too. <laughs> Dustin's father will stay with him until he is sedated. Just figure make him feel as comfortable as possible. It's easier for you guys. Uh, hey, Dustin. Come around this way. Yeah. Oh, so. You put it on your face. What you do is you make this balloon go up and down. Big breath, suck Dustin. It all, suck it all out, Dustin. You know what's in this with the watermelon? Something called laughing gas. Sometimes at the dentist you get it, and some kids actually laugh. Okay. Thank you, Dad. Well, today what we plan to do is to expose a large portion of the right hemisphere of the brain so that we can put the grid on the surface of the brain from which we'll subsequently record Seizure events also will be able to detect where the motor and uh, somatosensory regions of the brain are located. To collect data on the location of Dustin's seizures and whether removing the area could damage his ability to move and speak, doctors will place a grid of electrodes directly on his brain. I'd like to have a hole here today. I'm sure we want a hole here. The 
The team begins by opening Dustin's skull to expose his brain. You can make your hole just a little bit bigger next time. Preliminary results on Krista's kidney tumor are ready. So, the news is okay, okay? It is a, a tumor of the kidney, but it's not one of the cancerous tumors. At least we think it's one of, of a very rare benign type tumors of the kidney. It's called an oncocytoma. Um, and that's a much, much better prognosis than if it was cancer of the kidney, which is what we were very concerned about going in. If there was any doubt that it was a, the cancerous type, I would have recommended that we just get the whole thing out of there and be safe. Because she has cysts in her other kidney, I think we'd be wise to try and save as many functioning renal units, kidney units, as we can for her. So that when she's 35 or 40, she doesn't run out of kidney function. I think if we're able to save any, it'll be the top half of the kidney. But there's sort of a a bit of risk because we can get into some significant bleeding. But having said that, I think we can, uh, we can try to remove this, leaving about half her kidney. But if we get into any trouble, then we'll just remove the whole thing. Okay? Good. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. The team begins by inspecting the kidney to make a surgical plan. I think we're in uh, luck here, guys, because it looks like there's a couple of vessels coming into that kidney, a lower one and a higher one. There's another set of vessels, another leash of vessels supplying the upper half of the kidney. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. Green towel. There it is, you guys. OK. Just send it up to Pathology Fresh, please. Now that the tumor has been removed, doctors must rebuild the kidney's connections so the remaining part is functional. And we're going to put the kidney together back like that. And there's a leak in the collective system that we are going to have to also repair. Good. Okay. Dustin's surgery has been underway for two hours. Doctors have safely yeah, exposed his yeah. brain. That's all, that's all abnormal. Yeah. Well, the disease that we've seen on the MRI scan seems to be in this location of the brain here and here. The team can now place the grid of electrodes on Dustin's brain. That'll give us still good coverage here. The electrodes will record Dustin's seizures over the next two days so, I mean, I can kind of and will be used to pinpoint the areas of his brain responsible for speech brain. and movement. We're checking before we finish to, that the electrode is working. So we're just connecting one, uh, one of the electrodes. You'll see the EEG or the brain activity. Here. Dustin is already beginning to have seizures. Wow, it's almost like it's continuous, Krista eh? mm -hmm. has been in surgery for nearly five hours. Doctors have managed to reconnect her blood vessels to save as much of the kidney as possible. We did better than we thought we could do. We did very well. And that was because of the way her uh, blood vessels to the kidney were, which is great. Very lucky for her. It's the best case scenario all around, as long as pathology confirms the diagnosis that we have. Well, we're all done. Things went really well. It didn't have to compromise the, the good part, the main part of the kidney at all. She has lost some blood. She's lost about 20% of her uh, blood volume. We haven't had to transfuse her yet, but we're just going to repeat her hemoglobin again now. And if it comes down low, if we get a result that's lower than we'd like, 
we are going to have to transfuse her. Otherwise, her heart gets strained because we'll have to beat very fast to keep the oxygen going in her system. So we'll decide that in the next uh, little while. OK. Thank you so much. Good. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. OK. Thank you. All right. Very good. OK. Her PCA button. She's been using it for the morning. She's been using it? Yeah. Okay. So you know what to do, right? It hasn't been really helping me. This is the second time I pushed it. You know? To give her a little bit of time, okay? Yeah. She needs okay. to sleep, so. We're gonna have some rest. I love you too. Dustin has been in surgery for four hours. Doctors make final adjustments to the grid of electrodes on his brain. Once Dustin is closed, he will be taken to the critical care unit. Here we go. This is here. Everything went uh, really well. Okay, so from here the object will be to go back to the intensive care unit, start to uh, map uh, connecting the electrodes that are coming out through the head dressing to the machinery and then over the course of the next several days have ample opportunity then to uh, capture activity. get seizures and to record them so we don't want him to have so many that he's not himself but we would be very happy if he had sort of 10 in a day so we're not going to treat any of his seizures here unless he starts to have so many that he's just groggy and not himself in between right and so they'll page me if they're worried that they're starting to get too many and it doesn't matter if it's one in the morning or whatever hopefully he'll just have his usual pattern and we'll get lots of information mm -hmm. Fifteen-year-old Sasha has had a mishap with the nose ring. How are you? Good. Hi, I'm Shelly. So why don't you tell me what happened? Okay. Um, I was playing with my cats, yeah. and I picked it up, and it clawed me in the face, and it pushed my nose ring into my nose. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's where my nose ring used to be, and it's, like, in my nose now, I think. Well, let's take a look. Yeah. I just want to warn you, give you a fair warning. I tend yeah. to pass out a lot. Okay. All right. <laughs> and can I give you a fair warning? I tend to pass out a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get her a simple stud the next time. I think you need a pure stick then. <laughs> but I'll stay away from cats. First of all, I'm just going to take a little look and see if I can see it. Okay. It's actually right at the entrance. Is that a good thing or bad? It's a good thing. Great. It'll be easy to get. <laughs> now, I'll just ask for Audrey to come and help us hold our instruments and we'll get it out. Okay. Does it look fairly accessible? Yeah. yeah. Good. It really hurts. <laughs> yeah. Did it hurt when it went in? No, not really. It did not? Okay. I should be able to pull it out. How is it shaped? Exactly? It's like an L shape. It's like, it's like an L shape. It goes shape. into my nose like that and then it comes down. Oh, I see. Okay. So or it just kind of hangs hang. in there. Yeah. I'd have to use a little bit of saline to um, get it loosened up in there because it's uh, like The shape of Sasha's nose ring makes it more difficult to remove than expected. Mm -hmm. 
For the last two days, the epilepsy team has recorded Dustin's seizures to find out where they originate in his brain. Now, they are locating areas responsible for his normal language and movement. And we're going to stimulate each electrode that's in the area of interest and we'll actually be able to see a motor response so we'll know uh, we're in the right place so that we know uh, where we can safely operate or we can plan if we actually have to operate in one of these areas what the possible consequences could be. 26 to 20. The team stimulates an area they suspect controls Dustin's facial movement. Off. He's I think feeling something, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, you know what, that's sensory. It's okay. yeah. Did you feel something yeah. funny there? Yeah. Yeah, is it all gone now? Yeah. So we did all this yeah. at 20. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. probably, there's, and that's where all the seizures are coming from, right? Yeah. So there's probably no function. Yeah. So should we just do a bit of language? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's give it a try. A, B, C. Come on, Dustin. <laughs> Testing will continue until the team collects enough information to predict the consequences of removing seizure-causing areas of the brain. The ER team continues to try to extract Sasha's nose ring. a little bit more strength. Try to hold it. How you doing? All right. Considering we have something stuck in my nose. <laughs> You've been better. Okay. Started to come out? Well, I think it must be because we see more of it. I should give it a little nick. <laughs> you don't want me to do that, do you? I don't want any kind of nick. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I think the plan has to be that we give it a little nick so that we can get the jewel out. The top of her nose looks quite good, so it appears that it was a tiny, tiny little jewel, but... It's, get, it's gotten stuck, mm -hmm. huh? It got stuck on the inside, and <clears> it's not passing through the other way. What are you going to do once it's out with the piercing? Get another one. But stay away from the cats. I'll ask you again soon. Okay. Hi, hi. Now that all the data has been collected, the epilepsy team can present its findings to Dustin's parents. We have a lot of good information because uh, we captured and analyzed about 20 seizures. The area where the seizures are coming is not involved in motor function, so that's good. And he could have language in this area, but we stimulated and we didn't see any problem with his talking. So we know that uh, removing this part of the brain won't affect his language. There's a possibility that there could be temporary or even permanent changes in his ability to know where his left hand is in space or with feeling. But, no, when oh, you say you're removing those areas, are you, is it, you know, on the surface? Or no, I'll let going... Dr. Rocha explain that. Okay. Do I sit here? No, it's fine. Okay. We do plan to go and remove as much of this abnormal tissue as is possible, probably all of it that's abnormal, in order to control his uh, seizures. Okay. Yeah. Does, what does Dustin understand about what's <clears throat> happening? Yeah. Does he understands they have to operate to take the grid out, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, he said when they take the grid out, hopefully they'll take the seizures away. Yeah. So. That's good. Sorry, got lost. Dustin's second brain surgery is one day away. <laughs> From any of them. Preparing Dustin for his second surgery in five days has been difficult. Dustin was just kind of scared and nervous because he's more awake and with things. He was having quite a bit of seizures last night and stuff like that, so he wanted to be with people.
Just kind of walk out. See you in a little bit, buddy. So now we're going through the exposure and we're reopening the exact same scalp incision that we had created on Monday this week. We know that this zone, which we're resecting today, is very active for the seizures. And if it's still active during the surgery, that would increase the blood flow to that area of the brain, making the surgery technically more challenging for us because the blood loss will be greater and we'll have to make sure that we control bleeding at all times. Okay, now you're starting to see the electrodes. Ongoing seizures in Dustin's brain make the surgery more dangerous. Sasha must have a cut made inside her nostril to get the nose ring out. So, I'm going to make a small little nick. You're going to freeze it first? Right, of course. Yeah. Now, the freezing will hurt as well, okay? Like a lot? Well, probably not a lot. Kind of like when hurt. you go to the dentist. If you want me to stop, just tell me to stop. Mm -hmm. Is it round? Mm hmm. I take back that part where I said it could come out easily. Yeah. <laughs> there, there we go. go. I'd like to ask the question again now. <laughs> Sasha, what are we going to do about the, the nose situation? I'm going to get it pierced again, but stay away from the cat. <laughs> A strong will for mm -hmm. a child I have. Do it gradually and just sit for a minute. That's fine. Let's see. Okay, the outside is fine. Yeah. I just froze it. That's okay. why there's a bit of bleeding. Yeah. You might get some pain tonight, especially. But come back if you're developing increasing pain, uh, redness, or fever. Okay. As long as Sasha has no complications, she will be able to have her nose re-pierced in just one week. One day after surgery, Krista recovers on the urology unit. Hi, how are you? Did my yesterday remember me? I heard you had a good night, and uh, as you heard, we had a good surgery. I think we did the best service for your kidney. We just removed the um, mass itself, and it's probably be benign. This is good news, but uh, we'll have the final pathology later. Because the two major hazards in this surgery will be you're not breathing enough, so you have a collapse in your lung, and thereafter pneumonia. And the other thing, if you'll not move your legs, you'll have what we call clotting in your knees. Small exercises will prevent them completely. And again, we expect you out of the hospital in three, four days. Are you wiggling your toes? You're supposed to wiggle your toes and move them around for about five minutes. Tell me what five minutes is that? Dustin has been in surgery for one hour. His brain has been exposed, and doctors prepare to remove the parts responsible for his seizures. What we have is the area of the brain now that we're going to excise. And all of this tissue here will be removed, and it all looks uh, distinctly abnormal. No, we won't go in front of this artery here. We can just mark it so we know. Just do this part first, okay? So we'll do this as a block here. Okay, here's specimen. Mm -hmm. directly to, uh, the team will continue to remove the smaller areas identified for seizures, working carefully to control the bleeding as they go. Okay, so this piece is almost out. Dustin's parents wait for news from the operating room. The team has safely removed the areas identified for seizures without major bleeding problems. Yeah, we went deep, Carol, all the way down. So now we're going to be recording from the surface of the brain to see what the activity's like. 
in regions remote from where we've done our excision. And that's how we get it all lined up, ready to go. We'll go now over number two. Yeah. Electrodes are placed on other areas of Dustin's brain to monitor for seizures. If seizures are detected, doctors may elect to remove even more of the brain. I don't think there's anything consistent there. Mm -hmm. How's number 20 in particular? 20 is Plenty. quiet. Okay. It looks good. Yeah. So far, so good. No uh, hint of seizure activity coming from elsewhere. So now we're going to close. Once the team closes, Dustin's surgery will be complete. Hopefully we've done our homework and everything's going to be just as planned. However, with brain surgery, you never know. Okay. Everything went great. So we uh, lined up all of the uh, markings and we resected that portion of the uh, brain that was distinctly abnormal and we removed all of it. There was no other sign of seizure or epilepsy coming, so that was good news for us. The um, anesthetist will awaken, it'll take a few more minutes before that happens, and going over to the intensive care unit first. We'll certainly want an assessment on how his movement is with his arms and his legs. Afterwards, we don't anticipate any major problems with movement or paralysis, but we'll know within the next few hours. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's great. We're gonna do it and wash them up, okay? Clean water, buddy. Feel better, big guy? Good stuff, buddy. Right? Dustin will spend the night in the critical care unit. He will be carefully monitored in the hope his seizures do not return. Hello. Five days Sorry, after surgery, Krista is ready for discharge. How are you doing okay? Good. Not too much pain? Yeah. I just spoke with the pathologist, and they think that they haven't gotten all the stains yet, but they still think that the diagnosis that we gave you right after surgery is the right diagnosis, which means that this does not look like a cancerous tumor. It looks like a benign tumor of the kidney. Um, I don't think it'll come back. I don't think, because we got the whole mass out, okay? So overall, it's very good news. Okay. Can I go home now? You can go home if you want. Okay. Thanks. Ready? Krista's okay. surgery has had a good outcome. Bye. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you. Thank you. She will continue to be followed, but doctors are hopeful that her kidney tumor will not return. Eighteen-month-old Harry has had an accident at daycare. Harry slammed his finger in the door at daycare and now has a very deep cut that needs a stitch. So we're just waiting for the plastic surgeon to come look and see what's involved. Because I didn't think it was that severe when I picked him up, but uh, it's pretty deep, possibly down to the bone. This is little Harry, and uh, this morning at daycare, um, he, I think he caught his finger in the door, but he's got a, a laceration that sort of goes through the nail bed. It's okay. just, I think, it, it's going to need you to stitch it up. Like, it's quite... Doors. Uh, yeah. Door, door jams. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. A notorious door jam. We've had plenty, but not... <laughs> well, yeah, you know, so it looks like what he's done, you can see. He's basically, you know, split it across. Yeah, I can see, yeah. Right across the nail, so there's a piece of nail above and a piece yeah. of nail below, but then on this side, See, everything's just fine, fine over yeah. there. And the only thing really that, that needs to be repaired really is just the, ro the nail bed itself yeah. so that the new nail will, have a, will look normal when it comes in mm -hmm. and maybe a couple little stitches on the sides. We'll give him medicine that makes him a little sleepy and then we'll bring him into another room where we can monitor him a little bit better, oh. okay? Oh. One day after epilepsy yeah. surgery, Dustin remains on the critical care unit. Any seizures last night? No seizures, so that's good. His first night in years without a 
seizures. Yeah, probably, that. right? Yeah. Last night, just before I left, uh, when I examined him, he was very, very weak on uh, the left side, left arm and his uh, left leg. Likely he's going to transfer that activity to other parts of his brain to take over. But it'll take time, I think, from here to get stronger and better. So today we plan to do a CAT scan just to make sure there's no problem inside. The CAT scan will show if Dustin's brain is healing well. You know what? What? Do you remember you had an operation yesterday, Dustin? Yeah. yeah, you know what? We have to make sure those doctors did a good job, okay? Will you help? Yeah, I will. Will you help me too? Yeah. Okay, good job. Okay, I'm going to need you to lie on your back for a couple minutes just while we take the picture, okay? Good job. I know, Let's sweetie. Turn it on. You know okay. what? Just turn it. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, Here we go. We're going to the middle, to the middle, to the middle. You now you're right in the middle. You're perfect. Who do you want to stay with you? Do you want your mommy or your daddy? Your mommy? Okay. Well, you're in a good spot here. We should get some really good pictures today. The images of Dustin's brain will be assessed for signs of swelling or bleeding that could require further surgery. Three days after his brain surgery, Dustin is seen by neurology on rounds. So, uh, no jerks, right? Nothing that looks like a seizure. Good. That's great. And probably Dr. Nolan explained to you about the CT on the weekend. Do you want to just explain it again? I was just saying how the CT does show a bit of swelling, but no collection of blood or area that looks like it's um, sick or in trouble. So that's good. That's what we expect to see, and we think it's just swelling that will uh, resolve over time. That would affect his, um, you know, responding to touch on his left side, knowing where his left side is, mm -hmm. and also making him irritable and unhappy, and yeah, it's definitely all related to the surgery. Can I see your hand? Can you squeeze? No. Let's try this one first. Okay, the strong one. Big squeeze. Good boy. And now this one? Try, just try your best. Can you make a big squeeze? My leg. Is your leg sore? Yeah. Can you, can you push on my hand? Can you push? Okay, I'm gonna squeeze your toe. I want you to pull it away, okay? I think this is from the swelling and it will be temporary. Okay. I'm trying to move on my side. You wanna move, let's see you move over <clears throat> on your side yourself. Good boy. Where's the nose? <laughs> Harry must be sedated before his cut finger can be repaired. It's okay. It's okay. This is going to help you. Yeah, there's Daddy. Daddy's behind you. It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. Oh, um, if he's asleep, yeah. And then over to that side. Okay, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to numb this up, numb his finger up, so that when the medicine stops to work, when it starts wearing off a bit, it'll be totally numb. The nail is cut directly through, yeah. and so in order to fix the nail bed itself, I actually have to remove that cut part of the nail. Mm -hmm. With a broken fingernail removed, Harry's cut can now be sutured. Five days after his surgery, Dustin works with physiotherapists to strengthen his left side. Ready? One, two, three. Up you come. Good. That's it. Awesome. So why don't we try walking towards the, the chair now, bud? I can't. Let's try your best. Can you help, Mommy? Right. Mm. Take another time, okay? Awesome! Oh, you were doing great. Look oh, at that. All right. Now right. you know what? Put out of pressure. You gotta right. scoot your bum, your bum back. back. You can do it. Look at that. You're totally yeah. doing it. You're doing Dustin amazing. must get stronger before he can leave the hospital. Three. Ready? One, two, two three. Oh, thank you for helping us. That was great, bud. Good. Watch. 
Doctors have nearly completed suturing Harry's finger. There's uh, the part, the, remember the part, the growing part is the, yeah, the bottom is the near part, and that's all still there. Oh. So it seems like an awful lot for addressing, but yeah. it's just, it, this is only so that you can't get out of it. That's the only reason we do it. <laughs> okay, all the little piggies are in there. That's <laughs> as long as there are no complications, Harry's cast can be removed in nine days. Dustin's recovery continues to be assessed by neurology. How's your headache? Is it all gone? Good. Probably just because of all this swelling. Let's see how much you can move this hand today. Can you do this? Okay, squeeze again. Do that again. Dustin, does it feel the same on both sides? No. How does it feel different? This one feels... Later, that one feels harder. Can you wiggle these toes? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to wiggle them for you, okay? Okay, can you do that now? No. No? Okay. It's going to take a while, like probably a couple of months, so um, we need to look at where you're going to be able to get enough therapy. It's going to take time. It has been just 11 days since Dustin's first surgery. Dust, can you move your hand? Open up your hand. Wow, that's good. Can you raise your arm up? All right. Can you squeeze my fingers? Good, 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 good. Squeeze a bit more. Good. You know, everything I heard about the surgery is that it went really well. And I hope you'll do great. You're happy to get out of here, right? Yeah. Did you have a reasonable time here? People took care, good care of you? No. No. <laughs> they opened your head and did surgery on you, but hopefully you'll be much better now. It feels great. I'm so glad. Glad to be going home. I'm a little nervous considering some of the challenges that we have to face right now. Dustin is strong enough to continue his physiotherapy at home. He will return for a checkup in two months. Pack your stuff. Ready? Nine days after his accident, Harry returns to have his cast removed. We're going to see your hand again. Can you remember it's your somewhere hand? Somewhere under here. It's hidden. It's like opening up a present. And you know what? It's stinky inside. Yeah, no buff. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh. better than a bath, isn't it? Yeah. So you can just soak that for a minute, and Dr. Fisher will be in just a few minutes. Okay. You can show the doctor your boo boo. Okay. Well, that looks fine. See ya. Hey, thanks. Bye. <laughs> now you can get into mischief again. Two months after his discharge, Dustin returns for a checkup. He's come leaps and bounds in surgery. He was walking within two weeks of being at home, and now he's running and tearing all around. And no seizures. Pretty sure, no seizures, so, which is a huge difference. He was, at times, having hundreds a day, and uh, so even just that alone is incredible. Hey guys, hi. hi. How's everyone doing? Hey, Dustin, how you doing? He's been doing great, yeah. First of all, let me see this. Let me see uh, hands above your head like this. Can you try both sides? Let's see what you can do. Look at this. You guys remember the, the conversations we had in hospital when uh, right after the surgery, he didn't seem to be aware of his, his hand oh, yeah. and uh, the problems that we thought we might be facing. But look at this, this is spectacular. What a recovery. And a big smile on your face, which is showing that both sides are working the same. That's wonderful. All the best to you. Thanks for coming today. Good. Good to see you. Thank you very much. See you later. Dustin, nice to see you. Okay, guys. All right. Talk later. We'll see you in about six months' time. Before we realized that surgery was an option, there just seemed to be no hope. 
you know, it was so frustrating. We thought, we honestly thought that he would have to deal with this for the rest of his life. And now the fact that, you know, we have some hope that he can lead a normal life like every other kid is, you know, it's a good feeling.